So let's welcome Dorothy Gasquet, who's running Washington District 3. Uh, Dorothy, thank you for joining us on No More Fool's Day 2018. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're awesome. Oh, look, it's the, it started again. Hang on. Gotta turn this off. I love my own intro, but it, it likes to run on its own. Kind of <laughs> like, kind of like progressives. So, Dorothy, you, first of all, you've already served our nation as a veteran and done one of some of the scariest stuff around. Do you think running as a candidate is scarier? And and why did you choose to do this after already serving our country? <coughs> Well, it's definitely not scarier. Okay. Um, it's, I mean, people often ask me the question about what, um, how I'll deal with the pressure and how I'll deal with uh, having to, the pressure from the lobbyists and all the other people in office. And I'm like, ah, I've survived a war. I think I can handle just about anything else. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, and and you you did some serious stuff uh, in the military, if I remember we, from We the People. You were um, doing stuff that I don't even think ladies were supposed to do at that time, right? Nope, it was uh, illegal. Wow, wow. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for serving our country, and thank you for running. Uh, so, why? I, it, what are your key issues uh, in Washington? What are you, what is your purpose for your district? Well, the, the key issue is the key issue everywhere. It's economic security. And, and we're also facing a lot of environmental issues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Washington, you guys are dealing with a lot of LNG, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of pipelines running around. Um, and ho homelessness, houselessness seems to be one of the major problems uh, all around that area. Uh, is it in your district? Yes, yeah, so we, we have the highest rising rents in the nation. Wow. So housing is a really big issue here. Wow. And and uh, what would you do in Washington to change that? What would you do differently um, to make it give people homes? Well, I think the, the Everybody, biggest thing we our can next do guest is start is paying David people a living wage. People We've should had David have on the a show right many times before. Make enough but to live where they work. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, uh, minimum wage, $15 an hour, needs to be um, everywhere. No. No, that's not enough. <laughs> no, what should it be? Uh, by time we implement it, probably closer to twenty dollars an hour. And and do you think it should? I like that too. Do you think it should follow cost of living, just kind of go up like that? Yes. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. So, uh, do you have a primary uh, fool that you're trying to get rid of? Uh, it's, it's, who's who's in office right now in District Three? It is Representative Jamie Herrera Butler. Ah. Uh, yeah, and 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 she's Republican, right? Yes. Very pro-Trump. I was looking at the Trump voter score, and it's it's mm -hmm. like ninety. It's, it's pretty high up there. Yeah, I think uh, last I checked, she was at eighty-six percent. Wow, wow. You're right. It's gone up two points. It's everybody. Here's a slide. It's eighty-eight point four. So um, she's out doing even your expectations <laughs> in terms of Trump. Yeah, I'm just everybody. Going our up. next guest is David Hildebrand. We've had David on. So, um, what are we at? I'm looking at time. I got to look at time here. It's at six fifteen. We got Sarah. Uh, Sarah Smith also with us. Before we bring Sarah on, Dorothy, tell us where you're gonna be next. Uh, where you camp? You you are all over the place. I just want to say you've done a very Bernie campaign where mm -hmm. you were traveling all over, uh, trying to meet as many people as you can. And most of your the funds that you raise, what you can raise, has gone to that. So, where are you gonna be next? Where people can meet you? Well, we have our campaign headquarters grand opening this Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. How cool and is then that? we are doing a town hall for our lives on Saturday at 3 p.m. at our headquarters. It's at 606 Main Street in downtown Vancouver. Nice. That is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, so if you're in the Washington area, everybody, uh, please. And help Dorothy Gasquet. She is running against a Republican uh, who it likes voting for Trump. And I'm not sure how that serves the interests of uh, Washington's District 3. Right. Um, you are. Have you done any? Have you guys? I'm bringing on Sarah Smith right now. Have you guys done campaigning together, gone out and, and hung out together? So you're traveling throughout Washington. Hey, Sarah. Yeah, I love Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> We're best friends. We hang out. <laughs> awesome. 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 This is Sarah Smith, everybody. And I don't have to see Sarah Smith. You are running in District 9. Right? Yes, I am running in the deep blue District 9. That is correct. Right. Do you, what's the do you guys cross as you go around? I mean, what is the distance between your districts? Pretty far away? Yeah, yeah we're, we're 
three hours, right? You drive it more often than I have. Yeah, about three hours. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, just Sarah, and the amount of time that you spend, um, I mean, most of your money must go for gas or transportation, I'm guessing, just to get everywhere, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really fortunate that public transportation, I have a little bit in my district. Okay. Um, so we're, we're not as spread out as Dorothy's district, which is really nice. We're a little bit compact. So the 9th District covers Bellevue, Mercer Island, uh, South Seattle, Renton, Kent, Federal Way, and the North Port of Tacoma. So it's, it's about an hour and a half for me to drive one way the whole district from tip to tip. Um, but Dorothy's district is a lot bigger than mine. And I, I can attest to the fact that she and her amazing campaign manager have been trekking all across the third pretty constantly since I met her. So Dorothy has been putting in the literal legwork and the literal miles to make it from point to point on her district. So hers is a lot bigger than mine. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I am looking at that right there, the map. I just showed everybody look on, on screen. That is the map of Dorothy's district. I should have showed this earlier. That's District 3. Holy cow, you have some space to travel. Yep, 10,000 square miles. And then this is um, Congressional District 9, which, is it gerrymandered a little? Like it's <laughs> Yes. I'm just thinking. So we now have a 10th district that um, Tamarine Borelli is going to be coming on earlier to, or later to talk about this a little bit more. But we have the 10th district, which was carved out in a deal that was made between the Democrats and Republicans to give the Democrats the very deep blue 9th district and the, the Republicans the medium light red 8th district in exchange for another centrist Democrat, Denny Heck, in the 10th or in the 10th district. And wow. that was what created the tent. So gerrymandering doesn't necessarily just happen because of socioeconomic problems. Gerrymandering also happens because of voter registration. So it's a big problem that spans a whole range of issues that is just its own can of worms that I want that I want to deal with. And I know Dorothy wants to deal with too once we get to Congress. Wow. Wow. And just just to both of you, um, uh, I'm going to ask Dorothy first. Um, What's your experience been with the Democratic Party proper? Um, have they been friendly, unfriendly? <laughs> so we've actually had a lot of luck with the state party. They've been oh. very friendly, uh, but we really worked hard in 2015, 2016 to shift the face of the Democratic Party. Uh, we won a lot of PCO races in 2016, and then we were able to elect state committee members that were friendly to progressives. Um, Wait a minute. But, Wait a minute. Back up here. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just want for everybody out there that's a disbeliever. Did you just say that progressives took roles within the Democratic Party and you were able to force some change? Is that what I heard? That That is true. We are still working on more change so that we can also have support for candidates who want to challenge progress challenge other Democrats because, I mean, they tell us that we have to hold their feet to the fire, but how can we hold their feet to the fire if we can't challenge them in elections? My question exactly, and, and we seem to have that issue with, I mean, I see it here in Oregon. I know we have it in California. Um, so have they been, you said that state level, they've been friendly access to things for you? Yes, yes. It is our local county party some members of our local county party because we did get some leadership change which has been positive okay but they've bullied out a lot of the new people and really done a lot of things that are unethical in this election interesting interesting um and sarah your experience <laughs> uh they do not like me um <laughs> So I am challenging a a 22 year incumbent Democrat, Adam Smith. No relation. Uh, fun fact: his his wife's name is Sarah, and we both have bad hips, so we don't want to move my district too fast. Moving him, moving him slow. Um, but yeah. so the Democratic Party has barred my campaign from van access. Uh, they are, I, I've been really, really fortunate that I've re been reached out to by some county chairs, by some uh, some legislative district chairs, and I've been working with some of them. They've been kind of amazing, picking up the slack where the state party has been lacking. So at a local level, that's really been where we, 
where we've been able to put our fingers on the pulse of what's going on in the Democratic Party. Right. Um, I've been really appreciative for the the most local of levels, even city council races. We've seen some city council persons, which is a nonpartisan race, who are coming out in support and who are I know are part of the party, but are being very supportive and are being very fair. Um, we have a lot of third vice chairs that usually handle a lot of the tech stuff that are coming out talking about transparency, that are really excited about the campaign. Um, even Adam Smith himself has said he welcomes a challenger. So I think that it's important that if we if we have a, an incumbent that's saying he welcomes a challenger, that the state party embrace both of us and give us both equal access to everything and both equal opportunities to everything. And if the people decide that I'm the best representative for them in the ninth district or Adams, that's still the best representative after 22 years for them, then that's their decision. But I'm really hoping that the state party realizes that accountability, honesty, and transparency are the only way we're going to win people into the Democratic Party. Dorothy said it earlier as she said that they're they're bullying out some of the newer people. And they're talking, a lot of the Democratic Party nationwide is talking about things like voter engagement, getting more people involved in the party. But when they become involved and their opinions are different, people push them out. Long-term veterans push them out. Centrists, older persons, people that don't want to listen to new perspectives. Uh, anybody that's angry at the progressive movement, they push out these new people while all the same saying, oh, we need more people. I mean, you know, you have to embrace the challenge. You have to embrace the change. You have to embrace the next wave of Democrats. It's a marathon. These are just the next Democrats. They're they're the people that we have to pass the baton to. We need to embrace them and give them the opportunity to prove they've got the medal to win races. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so in interesting. Uh, yeah. I see the same hypocrisy or like conflict. Uh, you know, it's like a duality there here in Oregon where there's actually a, a bylaw and a, a, a rule that are conflicting with each other. Right. Where it's like, well, we don't want to compete with ourselves, but we want to be fair. It's like, well, yep. Come on, folks. <laughs> Embrace competition. It's good. <laughs> yes. Worst case scenario, what's the worst thing that happens? A 22 year incumbent has to go out into the community and actually engage with them. Oh, no. I mean, the, the worst thing that happens is we get new voters, people that are inspired, people that have opinions. We engage more people. I don't feel like there's a downside, especially in the ninth where we're blue through and through. There is no risk of a Republican taking this district. It's it's just about Democrat versus Democrat. This is the best district to start trying to engage more people. And the best way to do that is through uh, competition. And that's what we're trying to do. We've I've got people volunteering on my campaign that have never volunteered before, right. that were never politically active, right? And that was Bernie's whole movement. He engaged a new wave of people that have never been engaged before. And that's what my campaign is doing. And I think it would behoove the Washington State Party to embrace that and to roll with it and to give us the best opportunity possible to run a competitive campaign by giving us voter access. But they're still refusing. We're still fighting for it. It's been almost a year but we're we're making do we're we're out canvassing i've got an amazing field director who has just ty has been he's been rocking it i've got i've got my my very good friend Supreet and her husband who have just been amazing um so we're still running a strong awesome. ground game it's just sad that we kind of have to patchwork it together and the washington party's just pretending we don't exist well what it tells us to, what it tells me based on you know what we've been doing so far in this this uh, thing is they're afraid Oh, right. yeah. I mean, so, his seat's vulnerable. My incumbent seat is very vulnerable. He's a he's one of the top three fundraisers for the Democratic Party nationwide. And that's why that's why they're scared. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really the problem. I mean, when, when you say it should be about democracy, blah, blah, fairness, we know that there's another side to this, which is more about can you dial for dollars and are you going to tow the party mm -hmm. line um, the corporate way? Right. And that's I, both you and Dorothy have said, nah. Not so much, <laughs> right? Yeah, we're doing this together. Small dollar campaigns. <laughs> right. So Dorothy told us where she was going to be. Where are you going to be uh, campaigning next? So our big focus right now is a lot of the working class neighborhoods like Kent, Federal Way. Um, we're running in South Seattle, Columbia City. We're, we're focusing on where real people are. Um, I think our I believe our next canvassing event is going to be this upcoming Saturday from 10 to 2 in Renton. Uh, it's all the information is going to be available on the website, votesarasmith.com. But right now we're looking at Renton uh, on this upcoming Saturday. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And before we get you ladies out of here, so Dorothy, tell everybody um, where they can go. I, mean, we, we, I should say, look, I messed this up. I told you guys you had to know where you to go. Uh, tell everybody where to go to, to uh, uh, go to your websites, which we'll say that. But everybody should go to NMF, 
for No More Fools, nmf.uphillmedia.org. I'll put a big card up. You can see all the candidates' names. You can click to all their websites from there, and you can donate directly to their to their uh, donation, their primary donation link. But Dorothy, for you, real quick, tell everybody uh, where to go for your website and 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 uh, to volunteer if you need help. All right. So the website is dorothyforcongress.com or d4c.vote. That's the number four. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then uh, to volunteer, it's uh, there's just a little tab on Dorothy for Congress. It says volunteer. Click awesome. on that, fill out the form. And and if there's, do you need? Is there anything in specifics you need? Uh, people power with specific skills, or you know, besides gobs of money to help mm-hmm. compete. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, gobs of money are always great, but yeah. um, uh, really, just we need boots on the ground. We need people to phone bank. Um, both, phone banking. With both both Sarah and I, people can phone bank from home. Okay, cool. Um, so we both have access to an auto dialer that oh. allows people just to, just like they did for Bernie. Is that through Justice Democrats or? Um, yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. That was nice of them to provide that. So awesome. Uh, th- great. Thank you, Dorothy. Appreciate that. Thank you for running. Sarah, tell everybody where they can go to uh, to connect with you, volunteer, and what do you need the most? Besides so right now we are working on obtaining office space. We've been talking with another initiative group, um, a whole Washington, to try and share some office space, but we're working really hard because uh, – what where I'm at in King County, it's a it's a lot more expensive, unfortunately, to try and find some office space. But we are working really hard on it. We actually have burned through so much literature. We actually need funds to try and order more literature. So we've been knocking thousands of doors actually every week. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's been amazing. It's our volunteer base is so incredible. They're doing so much good work out there on the ground. We always need more boots. We've always got more neighborhoods that we need to canvas. Um, like Dorothy said, you can you can canvas for or you can phone bank for both of us from home. What is better than sitting in your pajamas and phone banking for candidates you trust and love? So I mean, come on, there's no downside. So if we can get people to to start helping up with helping us with phone banking, with canvassing, um, you can go to votesarasmith.com and it's there with an H. Uh, votesarasmith.com to see all of our information. Information, vote sarahsmith.com slash volunteer, vote sarahsmith.com slash donate. Um, we are really getting out there. We're hitting the ground super hard with our incredible leadership team. They're they're doing a ton of work, but we're we're out there. We need more boots. So if you can if you can help. If you can't call, walk. If you can't walk, uh, donate. If you can't donate, spread the word. That's 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 it. You nailed it. And ladies, thank you so much for what you're doing. Uh, we, you both have fools that's trying to get rid of Dorothy Gasquet is trying to get rid of Jamie her or Butler. And uh, Sarah Smith needs to get rid of a doppelganger. Adam Smith is just, you know, and, and I did you know he's 1965? It's I, I thought he was older. He <laughs> didn't age well. Uh- he's i'm sure gone through a lot i mean it's it's not easy work being in bed with the war industry and at his uh at his most recent town hall he actually mentioned that he doesn't think it's a bad thing for american sovereignty that we're involved in four or i'm sorry in eight i should double that eight unauthorized military occupations around the world um he's more concerned with american sovereignty than he is with anything else and i mean that winds up with the authorized use of military force military overreach um providing more power than is necessary to the president i mean pardon my language but he sure as hell is not fighting to get the aumf away from donald trump and if there's one president we need to get the aumf out of the hands of it's donald trump um but he's he's pretending to be progressive now but after 22 years i feel like words are really cheap he could have at any point in time been fighting for working people at any point in time been fighting for medicare for all for fair wages for for um free debt for debt-free education he could have been fighting for child care he should have he could have been fighting to repeal the aumf but he didn't and after 22 years i'm sorry you can't just step up to the plate it's too little too late they're just words and your voting record doesn't support you so that's the fool i'm fighting against and i'm fighting to get him out because we're ready and we need it absolutely well said (laughs) <laughs> All right, we're out of time, both of you. But um, Jamie and Adam, beware. Uh, <laughs> and everybody out there, no more fools. Let's donate nmf.uphillmedia.org. Let's help these ladies out. Let's get them some cash. They're on it. You're on fire. Thank you so much for running. It is the hardest thing to do in this entire revolution. So thank you both for running. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>